this morning. A 42-year-old man is dead after being stabbed in the Bronx. It happened just before midnight on Bruckner Boulevard near Castle Hill Avenue. Sources tell CBS2 the victim was attacked after being involved in a minor car crash with another vehicle. The other driver reportedly stabbed the 42-year-old in the leg before driving away. The victim was taken to Jacoby Hospital but did not survive. So far, no arrests. Out of breaking news in Harlem, police say an out-of-control car jumped a curb this morning, hitting a mother and her young son. And both were rushed to the hospital in critical condition. CBS 2's Christina Fan is live at the scene with more this news. Christina? Well, Chris Andrea, it appears the driver suffered from a medical emergency and the trail of destruction left behind is leaving bystanders in their tracks. Police say a mother and son were standing on the sidewalk when a red Toyota Camry plowed into them, crashed into a flower stand, and eventually came to a stop halfway up the block. We want to freeze this surveillance video showing the impact right before it happened. In it, you can see a 38-year-old woman and her 6-year-old son on the corner of West 148th Street and Malcolm X Boulevard. Police say around 8.45, a 68-year-old man lost control of his car, mounted the sidewalk, hit both victims and at least one other car. Witnesses who heard and saw the crash were stunned. This is John Langley. We do start with breaking news. This is in the Northwest Valley. Right now, Metro Police are investigating a suspicious death inside a storage unit. Joe Moeller is live now near Centennial Parkway in Durango with the latest from Metro Police. Joe, good afternoon. Good afternoon, John. We are just uh, west of Durango on Centennial Parkway. A woman was found dead in a storage unit here at the storage facility. The sign outside says it's storage west. I will give you a look at the investigation. It is just down this driveway on the left-hand side is where that storage unit is. a small unit, but police say they are deeming this suspicious because it was not locked accidentally. Around 6 Monday morning, police got a call from a person who found a dead woman inside the storage unit. Police believe the victim in her 50s was living in the unit with several other people. It was someone who knew the woman was living there who called police. We know for a fact that you cannot close this door and lock her in there without knowing that she was in there. Police are speaking with the person who was renting that specific unit, and they are looking for the other people who were living here at some point. He says there was a lot of drug use happening there as well. Now back out here live, another look at the investigation. Following breaking news in Queens, a pawn shop worker now in critical condition after he was shot in the head. This happened this afternoon during an attempted robbery. CBS 2's Ali Bauman live in Jamaica now with details. Ali. That's right, Maurice and Christine. Police say the 60-year-old victim is critical at the hospital right now. Now, we spoke to a, vic a witness who works next door. He says the victim is the shop's owner. That witness heard a woman screaming, came next door to find out what happened, and saw the victim unconscious and bleeding. The shooting happened around 1 p.m. on Jamaica Avenue off 179th Street. Police say the shop owner was shot in the head during an attempted robbery, and the gunman fled the scene before officers arrived. The witness we spoke to was first on scene in called 911. He says he found the victim bleeding from the head, unconscious on the floor in the doorway between the front and back section of the store. A friend of the victim came here after hearing what happened. This is what he said. You do not come out that door unless he knows you. He always deal with people behind the counter. Always been good to me. I've been living here for six years. And every time I come deal with him to talk to him about gold, business, money or anything, we always give good advice. And he always took care of me. Alive was on Friday, so that was the, the reason for the well-being check. 46-year-old Shawnee's Ross and 47-year-old Toriano Windham found shot and killed inside this home off of Ohio Street on Detroit's west side. Ross's family got worried and went to check on her. When they got there Sunday evening, the front door was open. They immediately called 911. Uh, upon entry, uh, they discovered a male and a female, uh, both deceased, uh, that had been shot. Detroit police say they were found in a bedroom. This is an isolated incident, but at this point, investigators are not giving up any details related to motive.
We don't believe that there's any threat to the public at this time besides what happened in, inside the location. Sources tell Fox 2 that Shawnee's Ross has ties to both the Detroit Police Department and the Wayne County Sheriff's Office, but it's unclear how. First of all, I just want to say our hearts go out to that family. I just can't imagine what they're feeling at this particular time. Investigators are working to determine an exact time of death, but are asking people in that neighborhood to report anything suspicious that happened between Friday and Sunday evening. Reporting downtown Detroit, Jessica Dupnack, Fox 2 News. We believe neighborhood after gunshots were fired into a car and a senior citizen was killed. The victim... 71 years old. Good evening. I'm Greg Lee. And I'm Julie Hainer. It happened in Oakland's Fruitvale neighborhood. Police say the victim was struck by gunfire near 28th Avenue and International Boulevard and then drove for another half a mile before crashing. This evening, police are searching for the person who pulled the trigger. Our crime reporter Henry Lee is here now with the latest on the investigation. Henry. Julie, this man is one of the older homicide victims in Oakland in recent memory. Police now searching for his killer. It's a sad tragedy once more here in East Oakland. Another deadly shooting in Oakland's Fruitvale neighborhood. The victim, a 71-year-old man driving along busy International Boulevard. Near 28th Avenue uh, was shot uh, through the windshield. They hit him in the head. Oakland City Council member Noel Gallo represents the Fruitvale neighborhood. He says the victim was shot near 28th Avenue in International. Police began receiving calls at about 6.20 Sunday night. After being shot, the man continued driving for about half a mile along International in his pickup truck. He wind up coming here on 33rd Avenue and crashing uh, into vehicles. Video from Citizen App shows Oakland police surrounding the victim's pickup in a Toyota Scion. Officers and first responders tried to save him, but he died at the scene. We're in a lifetime of the age doesn't matter. The victim, clearly much older than the average casualty to gun violence on the streets in Oakland. Gallo says the criminal element doesn't seem to differentiate. You know, I mean, I see. Rest in the murder of a 55 year old hey, Baytown uh. mother and grandmother. This is the mug of the accused suspect, Amir Ricardo Ferguson, arrested in Cincinnati, Ohio. Now, earlier this month, police say ring surveillance footage shows Ferguson <laughs> approaching Roxanne Innes's home and telling her her car had been yeah. sideswiped. Police found Innes shot lying in the street next to her car. Using that ring video and tips, police say they matched the video to Ferguson's social media accounts. According to court documents, Ferguson told police he lured Innes out so another man could shoot her, but police have charged Ferguson with murder. Morning, police need help in tracking down the suspect behind a murder that was caught on camera. We need to warn you, this is tough on the eyes. We have blurred the moment that the shots hit the victim, but you can see the suspect pointing the gun and firing before running off. Police say this happened late Saturday night on Grasmere Terrace in Fort Rockaway, Queens. The victim identified as 26-year-old Peter Pontier. If you have any information about the shooter, please call police. Today's the final day of negotiations. And demanding answers tonight after surveillance video captures someone hitting his father with their van, killing him. What are you thinking? Like, what are you thinking? Why do you have to do it? Why do you have to, like, kind of, like, use a car to hit a person. Well, that man says the video proves the attack on his father was deliberate. Good evening, everyone. I'm Frank Malik. And I'm Julie Hayner. The crash happened back on March 18th near 8th and Alice Streets in Oakland's Chinatown neighborhood. New at 10 tonight, KTVU's Amber Lee joins us now live in Oakland after speaking with the victim's friends and family. Amber? Julie, the victim's son tells me his father lived out of his truck in Oakland, Chinatown, and that he had many friends. He shared with a surveillance video that shows the attack, but leaves many questions unanswered. This surveillance video shows victim Chiho Leung running down Alice Street in Oakland, Chinatown, and two men getting into a blue van, driving towards him. And shortly after, the driver of the van appears to deliberately hit Leung with the vehicle. The victim's son, Ken Leung, tells me he wants answers and justice for his father. I was shocked. Like, I was like, well, I just don't know why this happened. Like, I was like, what's going on? Why you have to, like, hit a, like, like use a car to, like, struck a person like this? Can says his 66-year-old father never regained consciousness after the crash on March 18th, around 6.30 in the evening. Leung died of his head injuries at the hospital eight days later. Moments before the crash, the two people from the van can be seen flagging down two police vehicles at the stop sign, but it's not known what was said or why police continued on. 
Ken says his father and family immigrated to the U.S. 26 years ago, that he wanted... It's a quiet community. The longtime owner of Pino's Pizza here on Butler Pike in Chalfont had been missing for two weeks. His wife allegedly told everyone he was away on business, but his worried son and the sudden appearance of a large hole in the ground had investigators thinking otherwise. 48-year-old Anna Maria Tolomello is charged with shooting and killing her husband, popular pizza shop owner Giovanna Galina, inside their Hilltown Township home, and then trying to cover up her crime. It's crazy. I can't even believe something like that happened right next to my house. The couple's neighbor, Jessica Gabriella, says she watched in bewilderment Tuesday as someone dug a seven-foot by three-foot hole just off the home's driveway. I thought that was quite strange, a hole that size for somebody to be digging. Investigators say the hole was actually a grave, Tolomello mellow intended to use to bury galena the circumstances are certainly a bit unusual uh, from our perspective hilltown township police chief christopher Engelhart says tolomello told investigators she shot galena in the head on march 16th as he strangled her in the home's master bedroom police only made the discovery tuesday the 22nd after galena's son contacted them saying neither he or his father's employees at pina's pizza in Chalfont had heard from him in nearly two weeks later that day as a result of additional information we received, a search warrant was obtained for the property. Officers responded, um, entered the residence, and uh, found what we believed were human remains in the master bedroom of the residence. Investigators believe Tolomello kept the body in the home for 13 days while she cleaned off the gun and ditched the mattress in a dumpster outside Peanuts in an attempt to get rid of the evidence. I never even heard anything. I mean, it's very weird. <laughs> I mean, I live right across the street. I mean, I didn't even know. Employees say Galena owned Pina's for several decades. They describe him as a staple of the community. They say this whole ordeal has left them shocked and feeling sad for both of them. We're live in Shelf. Dallas police arrested the mother of the three-year-old boy who was shot and killed Monday morning in Dallas. Hello, I'm Steve Eager. And I'm Heather Hayes. Police say Lucrevi on Washington told them her child was a victim of road rage. Police say they found no evidence of that, but they did find a gun in her car and indications that she was driving with three unrestrained toddlers. Fox News' Lori Brown joining us now from Dallas with more. Lori. Heather, police say they charged a mother with felony child endangerment because officers found a gun in her glove compartment where they say her three young children who had been in the car could have easily gotten hold of it. This is video of 26-year-old Lecravion Washington as she was booked into the Dallas County Jail. We now know from police records she was under surveillance after the shooting death of her three-year-old son, Jalexis, Monday. An undercover officer observed her in a vehicle that was driving erratically Wednesday. Uniformed officers pulled the car over and arrested her for outstanding warrants. She declined to talk further to our detective, so at that time we placed her into custody. She went to the Dallas County Jail and she was charged not only with those outstanding warrants, uh, but also with endangering a child. And the endangering of a child charge stems from a child having access to a weapon. Police initially interviewed Washington Monday after she arrived at the Medical City Dallas ER at 10 a.m. Her child critically wounded from a gunshot wound to his head. Both mother and child were seen about 20 minutes earlier at a donut shop near the Dallas College Richland campus. About 9.40, they were at the donut shop. Just before 10 o'clock, they arrived at Medical City Dallas. That's one of the things that we've asked the public for. If they saw the mother and the child en route to Medical City, Dallas. According to the arrest affidavit, Washington initially told police her son was shot by a stranger in a road rage incident. Police say they found no evidence to support that claim. She said there were no weapons in her car and allowed officers to search it. They found a gun in her glove compartment, a weapon police say she purchased earlier this month. There were also no child restraint seats, despite her arriving at the hospital with children ages four and two, in addition to the three-year-old. An autopsy determined the gunshot to Jalexis was at close range and could not have come from a passing car. It is unclear who in the car fired the shot that killed the boy. This is the death of a three-year-old child. Breaking news in Brooklyn, a 12-year-old boy dead in another shocking case of gun violence. Police say the child was hit by stray bullets while sitting in a car. CBS 2's Corey James joins us live from the scene in East Flatbush, where a woman was also shot. Corey. 
Yeah, Dick and Christine, a very large police presence out here just hours after that shooting. But this appears to be the focus of the investigation. You can see on the other side of the crime scene tape, the car that police are surrounding at this hour. That is where we've been told a 12-year-old boy was killed after getting shot in the head by straight bullets. Take a look at this video. Authorities say the boy was sitting in a parked car on the corner of Linden Boulevard and East 56th Street. They tell us inside that car was a woman who was shot three times and she was rushed to the hospital. Right now, sources tell us a black infinity with Connecticut plates fired shots towards the parked car, possibly aiming at another vehicle. We've also learned another child, only seven years old, was in the backseat of the parked car, but police say he was not injured. At this time, we do not know the relationship between the kids and the woman who was injured. But back here live again, you can see kind of the active presence out here. We've been told Mayor Adams is expected to show up shortly to brief us on what took place. Place. Again, a 12-year-old boy shot in the head and tragically died. We're live here in East Flatbush, Brooklyn. Corey James, CBS 2 News. All right, Corey, thank you. Ready to start eating healthier? Damn. Those scary moments happened just yesterday afternoon. That is when the man robbed the family-owned store, attacking a man and woman who were right there inside. The store's owner, who is the brother of the man attacked, and the husband of the woman, tells us the robber had pretended to be a customer until he felt he had an opportunity. Without warning, without demand, nothing just blindsided my brother with uh, hitting him with, in the head with the gun several times. It's like somebody coming into your home and committing some brutal act in your home. You don't want to live there anymore. The owner tells us in the short time the crook was upstairs, another customer walked in. As they came back down, that customer took off along with the robber. The man and woman suffered minor injuries. New video serving as evidence in the murder of a Pennsylvania Uber driver, and we want to warn you, this may be hard to watch. Allegheny County Police say the man in the back is the suspect, Calvin Crew. You see Crew get in the back of Christy Spacuza's Uber. This was back in February, the video released by the court yesterday. Less than 20 minutes into the ride, police say Crew pulled out a gun and pressed it to the back of Spacuza's head as she pleaded with him. Come on, man, I got a family. What are you I got doing? I family, too, no drive. What are you doing? Drive. Please stop. I have four kids. What are you doing? Detectives say crew made Spacuza drive for an hour while going through her banking apps before killing her. The trial for Calvin Crew got underway yesterday. Arraigned on murder charges stemming from the March 24th torture and killing of a homeless Pontiac man named Toby Farrington. The first of the trio called before the judge was 50-year-old Alice Anthony, who the judge also noted has a nickname. AKA preacher. Anthony's attorney requested a bond with conditions. I would ask for a bond and with a GPS tether at this time. But the judge wasn't having it. The defendant is charged with a life offense. Bond is denied. But when the judge wanted to know if Anthony had anything to say before sending her back behind bars, that's when Anthony begged for compassion. I just need to tie up my affairs and spend a little time. I have 14 grandbabies, seven children. My youngest is 15. Okay, okay. But the judge stood firm. Your bond stays tonight. Police believe Farrington got drugs from Anthony in exchange for doing odd jobs at a Pontiac home near Saginaw and Woodward, where he was killed. Police also believe before the killing, Anthony became angry at Farrington over a financial transaction. Farrington's nude and tortured body was found a day after the murder near Terry Lake in Pontiac. You're all set. Go knock on the door and let them know you're done. Up next, the youngest of the trio to be arraigned. 28-year-old Romero Wilson. A high bond with a uh, GPS tether. Once again, the judge said no, but before wrapping up the arraignment, he wanted to know if Wilson had any questions. Can you repeat that all over one more time? That's, that's like, this stuff is confusing to me. The judge made his statements clear. Understand? Yes. The last arraignment was for 41-year-old Brian Bonner, and the attorney requested bond with a GPS tether. Bond is denied. Can't get bonded out, right? Correct. That's right. 
after bond was denied for all three. Their next court date is set for April 12th. In Southfield, Ingrid Kelly, Fox. Police are looking for a group of men accused in an unprovoked attack on a Hasidic man in Williamsburg. We're told it happened around 8 p.m. Friday night. Police say the 21-year-old victim was walking on Jerry Street when the group simply started to punch and kick him. The victim was treated for minor injuries at the scene. The NYPD Hate Crimes Task Force is investigating the attack. A mystery in Queens tonight. Police are investigating the death of a woman found unresponsive at a flushing karaoke bar. Workers at the Cinderella Lounge on Northern Boulevard discovered the woman passed out right about 3.30 this morning. They took her to the hospital where doctors pronounced her dead. Investigators believe she was between 20 and 30 years old, but authorities have not revealed her identity. The medical examiner will determine how she died. Woman being violently robbed in Queens. Police say the 26 year old was left with abdominal pain and cuts to her hands after the suspect tossed her to the ground and ripped her purse away. It happened back on March 9th near 131st Street and Liberty Avenue in South Richmond Hill. Police say she was taken to Jamaica Hospital to be treated for minor injuries. So far, no arrests arrived on the scene of breaking news here in the Bronx. We are at the intersection of Grand Concourse in East 188th Street. And as you mentioned, another victim of a senseless a gun violence incident. This time, a 61-year-old woman, an innocent bystander who was shot by a stray bullet. I want to point out to you behind me, as you can see, there is a very heavy NYPD presence at this hour. The details we are learning, simply disturbing. The victim shot in the back, walking along East 188th street now there was some sort of argument between a group of men the female victim is not believed to be involved with either group at all she was rushed to saint barnabas medical center where she died now gun violence has been a pressing issue for the adams administration now only in its fourth month just this morning the mayor was uh, comforting the family of a 12 year old boy another innocent bystander shot dead while sitting in a car with his family last week and now again this evening happening around seven o'clock this evening a six 61 year old woman, an innocent victim, a bystander who was caught in the crossfire. Hey, police are looking for the two people outside a restaurant in the Soundview section of the Bronx, and it happened in broad daylight, the middle of the day. Cops say two men pulled their guns just after three o'clock on Saturday in front of the Cello restaurant on Soundview Avenue. No one was hit by those bullets. If you know who these two are, do the right thing. Call Crime Stoppers 1 800 577 TIPS victim to the hospital. Police say they've arrested a 13-year-old girl for the attack. Surveillance video shows three people surrounding the woman as she entered her apartment building in Pelham Bay on Sunday. Police say the victim was thrown to the floor and her purse pulled from her arm. She suffered a broken hip. The search continues for the other suspects.